on an all-new Dr. Phil. Do you know the difference between right and wrong? Yes, Doctor. You have made the most sinister manipulation of your child that I can imagine. A mother with a terrible secret. What is it that you're lying to her about? There's no better time than right now. She's sitting right in front of you. I've been lying to you about... The shocking reveal. You allowed her to go to bed at night thinking my mother has terminal cancer when in fact you are cancer free. You told me that I have to pull the plug. That's why I'm here. It's because I want the help. You lied. It was totally for attention. Like you're disgusting. Let's do it. Good show, everybody. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Is here today, and she has four to six years left to repair her relationship with her mother, Jen. Why such a tight timeline? Well, after recovering from cervical cancer once in 2015, Jen recently broke the news to Alexa that it had returned, and she only has a few years left to live. Or does she? There are some twists and turns to this story, so you need to buckle up and don't miss a second. Alexa says she also knows for sure that her mother has another real potential death sentence staring her right in the face. She's talking about addiction. Alexa says her mother refuses to stop drinking even though she knows it's killing her. My mom is an alcoholic. On top of that, she has cervical cancer and has been told that she has four to six years to live. I believe if the cancer doesn't kill my mom, that alcohol will. My mom will drink a whole 12 pack of hard seltzer and then a bottle of liquor. This is what happens when I drink. I woke up this morning at like nine and I've already had six of those. I would come home from school and she would be drunk, either blacked out or passed out. My mom will binge drink for like two weeks and then she'll say that alcohol disgusts her. I don't want to drink anymore. I'm tired. And then the next day she'll be completely drunk and blacked out. She'll drink until her money is gone. I believe my mom drinks and drives. She doesn't think that she's putting her life in danger and other people's lives in danger. When my mom drinks, she calls me a bitch and she'll tell me that I'm very ungrateful. She denies it, says I'm sorry, and just hopes that I get over it. Recently, my mom was drinking very heavily. We got into an argument. Things escalated very quickly, so I ended up leaving. She sent my boyfriend a really long, hurtful message about me. Pretty much just explaining like how much she hates me and how much she doesn't want me to be in her life. She said she was sorry the next morning, but was like, oh, well, I was blacked out. I was drinking. Last year, she had told me cancer was really bad again. The biggest frustrating part is my mom does know that the cancer could kill her and that she does choose to drink. I've been wanting my mom to get sober for almost 10 years now. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't doing this for her. Well, Alexa, I'm sorry you're having to deal with this, but I think you're doing the right thing in bringing this to a head. Yeah, I would just want her to be completely honest about everything. And now, you said this has been going on for 10 years. So what, what was the parenting situation like for you when you were a teenager? What, who was seeing after you? Who was nurturing you, watching out for you, taking care of your daily needs? Um, honestly, I relied on myself a lot. I did bounce around and then it did caused me to be homeless when I, right before I turned 18. You were living in the park for a while. Yeah, I was living in um, an abandoned trailer the, a year before that for like three weeks. And then um, 2018, I lived at a park. Where was she when you were living in an abandoned trailer and living in a park? Where um, was she living? I'm pretty sure she was living with her ex-boyfriend. 
you said when you would tell her about your living conditions that she accused you of lying. Yeah. She didn't believe I, it. What, what did she think you were lying about? Um, when I told her that I had lived at the park, she didn't believe me. She would call me like a liar and say that it's not the truth. Yeah. You said you've tried to confront her about your feelings of abandonment and that when you do, she feels attacked or denies what happened and says, and I quote, I'm an alcoholic, there's nothing I can do about it. Mm -hmm. So anytime there's like an, a problem or I need a parent's support and I go to my mom for those types of things, she kind of just like, if, it, if it's too big of a situation and she doesn't know how to deal with it, she'll just pretty much blame it on the fact that she's an alcoholic and say that she doesn't know how to deal with it because she's never had a mom and that's, that's pretty much it. Wow. So at times she's in denial about what her problems are. Other times she hides behind them exactly. to escape accountability for you. Mm -hmm. She had cancer before and you took care of her. You helped her. When it came back, what was her attitude about getting treatment? Um, she told me that she pretty much would never wish chemotherapy upon her worst enemy. And she basically told me that she wasn't going to do chemo, even though she knows she has cancer. She put a burden on you. She said, if things get really bad and I'm not cognizant, she said, I want you to pull the plug. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a heavy load to put on a, a, a young daughter. That's a big responsibility. Like, that's pretty much me choosing to end my mom's life. And that's not something I would ever want. And what do you want her to do? I just want her to get better and like just do chemo again, or at least try to fight. For her life. For her life and for her kids. this is killing you, obviously. Well, Alexa says her mom's alter ego is drunk Jen, and she puts on a show to make people laugh. But Alexa says there's just nothing funny about her mother making a fool of herself and descending deeper and deeper into addiction, all while her life clock is counting down. We'll talk about all of that next. On a typical day, I could easily drink 24 hard seltzers. When she's drunk, she likes to text horrible things. Alexa is the most toxic, lying, backstabbing person I've ever met. I just become this like demonic monster. I just get crazy and I lose it. And later... So Jen, what is it that you're lying to her about? There's no better time than right now. She's sitting right in front of you. You're disgusting. I don't want to look at you. Tomorrow, his family claims he's challenging. We need to go to walk. Get out. Don't touch me. Destroying doors, breaking car windows, and kicking walls. Misunderstood. So you weren't really talking about blowing up the bus? No. And who's to blame? He shoved me. How could he shove you into it if you weren't in there? I was in there. You just said you weren't. For his behavior. He's caught in the crossfire of all of these adults going back and forth and fighting. That's tomorrow. Then on Friday, she claims her mother, Teresa. This is the message you sent. I wish Maxwell had survived and you died. Is no Mother Teresa. It is about me. That's Friday. When I get very drunk, my best friend and her three daughters call me Drunk Jen because I act completely different. She likes to make everybody laugh and acts like a goofball. One of the neighbors gave us a beautiful wedding dress and I did this really stupid dance in it. I don't think it's funny. It's not a joke at all. When I see videos of myself drunk, I feel nothing but guilt. I'm ashamed. I'm embarrassed. I don't want to be like that. Well, Alexa's mother, Jen, admits that she is addicted to alcohol and that drinking takes away all of her pain, all of her hurt. Jen says she'll binge drink for days and blacks out 95% of the time. When I take that first sip of alcohol, it feels amazing. I have to stop and take a drink. Even just that one drink makes me feel so good. It instantly hits me. 
On a typical day, if I was drinking just the hard seltzers, I could easily drink 24 of them. If I'm drinking hard liquor, I can drink probably two pints. Yesterday I passed out after I drank four days in a row. The other night I drove around at about 1.30 a.m. to three different liquor stores. I drank a huge bottle of sake, which probably equaled out to maybe 20 shots, and I was driving. I personally don't like being around my mom when she's drunk because it makes me mad. The only time me and Alexa have arguments or fight is because of my drinking. When my mom and I get into an argument, she likes to text horrible things about me to other people. Alexa is the most toxic, lying, backstabbing person I've ever met. I don't give a f if talks to me or not. I told her to never contact me again and that she's dead to me. I just become this like demonic monster. I'm not even like a mom or even a human being. I just get crazy and I lose it. I do not drink in front of her and I will hide any alcohol I have. I have this shoe box and it'll fit like four hard seltzered waters in my bathroom. Back behind all the shampoo and stuff. I also hide them in between my clothes in each dresser drawer. I've made so many promises to her about getting sober and never drinking again and basically lying to her. If I ask my mom to stop drinking, she'll be completely honest with me and tell me no. Because of my addiction, I cannot hold down a job. I've lost friends, I've lost family. If things don't change, I will die. I will drink myself to death. Well, you may notice that despite the fact that we just met Jen on tape and we talked about dealing with some of her issues, she's not sitting here right now. And there's a reason for that. I needed to bring in some reinforcements. And when I say reinforcements, I'm talking about a man who knows his stuff when it comes to what we're dealing with here with Jen. I want to introduce my good friend, Coach Mike Baer. Now, Mike is a life coach. He's also the founder and CEO of Cast Centers. He's also a New York Times bestselling author, not once, but twice. And he has a new book out now, and it is a must read in my opinion, and it's called One Decision. And it is a powerful book that shows you how making just one change in your life can bring about remarkable results in so many areas of your life. So Mike, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Dr. Phil. Now, Mike, you, um, you spent time with Jen already. What do you think Jen's biggest obstacle is? Spending my limited time with her, it was very clear that her obstacle was the ability to get honest. Because if you can't get honest, nothing changes. If someone doesn't take the time to reflect on themselves, to analyze their life, to realize what's not working, their behavior just doesn't change. And yeah. so Jen is just in this cycle of behavior just not changing. Yeah. Now, uh, Alexa, you have a sister. What's your biggest fear for her? Just thought my mom's gonna do something really stupid and my sister's gonna never talk to her again. And it's gonna be hard for both of them and for me. And, and let's remember with all this, people do get sober. Yeah. People do change, but not sure if Jen's ready. Now, Alexa's mother, Jen, admits that when she drinks, she becomes a demonic monster. She says she will say anything to hurt her daughter. Well, we're gonna meet Jen next. And I'm not going to buy this, the devil made me do it. You got to own your choices. We'll be right back. You drink because you don't want to think about it. At some point, you will be pulled over and you will be asked to walk a line. Are you able to work? No, I'm on medical leave. No, 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 no. The number one step is making a decision, to be honest. It's non-stop drama. My daughter, Melissa, is a mean, raging alcoholic. Falling down the stairs, laying unconscious in the snow. All month long. What do you do all day? I drink. On Dr. Phil. I'm so worried about her dying. You're killing her. Real people. Alexandria has gone to the emergency room 600 times. Sometimes it can be like three, four times a week. Real problems. You've been fired from four jobs because you just walked out and went to the hospital. 
Yeah. You got off the plane because you thought you were having appendicitis. If I don't go to the hospital, something is going to happen to me. Dr. Phil May. It's the people that get a little bit of success, then they strut around like King Kong. I don't think he has a single staff member who can say anything good about him. These laughable accusations, literally not worth my time. You need a wake-up call. I honestly don't remember how many times I've driven drunk. I tell her all the time that she shouldn't. She tells me that she won't, but she never stops. I drink to excess and I black out. One time she was so drunk that she swerved into the other lane and there was a semi coming and I had to grab the wheel and turn the car so that we can avoid an accident. One time I drank a medium-sized thing of whiskey and a 12-pack of beer. I drove my youngest daughter back to her father's house and was completely blacked out and don't remember taking her and don't remember coming home. Every day we are faced with decisions. About 35,000 every day, in fact. And some of these decisions can change our lives in the blink of an eye and forever. That's exactly what Mike talks about in his latest best-selling book, One Decision. Now, as you just saw, Jen readily admits to driving blackout drunk at least four times a month. Now, Coach Mike met with Jen earlier this week to get a better idea of what life looks like for her in the future if things don't change, and I mean change right now. Take a look. I'm Coach Mike. Hi, Coach Mike. And Dr. Phil has asked us to get together. It sounds like some of the decisions you've made may end up with you being homeless in about two months, right? Uh, Yes. What I want to do is an exercise with you, which I call playing the tape through. Okay. Let's say you haven't stopped drinking in two months. I will die or I will end up homeless, and I have been homeless. Can you show me how you would sleep in this car? The front seats have to be pulled up, and then I'll push these back as much as I possibly can. I would sit like this. Literally, this is about as much space as I would have to sleep, and I have a back injury as well, which makes it even worse. Well, I have another exercise in terms of playing the tape through. Okay. You know, I'm sober almost 19 years. Yes. And I still play the tape through. At some point, you will be pulled over. Yep. And you will be asked by a police officer to walk a line. Right. So I'm going to have you do it once. Okay. Without these glasses, which these glasses, they simulate you having several drinks. And do you want me to do like the whole toe-to-toe thing? Yeah. Can you go any quicker? Uh, I can try, but then I'm going to look drunk. All right. So now I'm gonna have you put these on and do the same movement you were just doing. Just walk across. All right, you can take them off. Okay. Kind of ended up way over here, right? Right. People don't believe it when they're under the influence. Like you said, I'm a good driver even when I'm drunk. Yeah, which is horrible. Now, we're gonna talk about playing out the tape if you decide to get sober. You've had attempts in the past. Why do you think they haven't worked? I wasn't actually trying to get sober. I was just trying to do what everybody else wanted me to do. What's the biggest excuse that stands in the way of you getting sober? Honestly, I wasn't ready to stop having a good time. You know what's interesting? The first thing that came out of your mouth was honestly. honestly. The reality is you know your life will get better if you get sober. Exactly. And the number one step is making a decision, to be honest. Are you able to work? At the moment, no. I'm on medical leave. No, 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 no. I'm talking about, do you have the ability? Absolutely. We walked around. Absolutely. You just walked a line with goggles on. Absolutely. I do have the ability. Okay. You've taken the narrative that your back pain is so extreme that there's no way you could work. The reality is, you're not having a job today, in my belief, honestly. Yes. Because of your drinking. You're absolutely right. And I do need to stop lying to everybody and I need to stop lying to myself. What are you feeling? It's a lot of guilt for the, the bad choices that I've made that have led me to where I'm at now. You drink because you don't want to think about it. Yes, I drink because I don't want to feel it. Really what it comes down to is first getting honest, then being open, and then being willing. Yes. So we're going to sit down with Dr. Phil 
see what decisions you need to make. Right. And what do you need to decide to do differently in order to get it this time? Well, Jen, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for having me. You seem to have some candor with him that you haven't had before, for a long time at least. Yes. And he has that effect on people. Well, Mike, Jen says when she takes a first sip of alcohol, it takes away from the very beginning all of her hurt and pain. Mm -hmm. And that she, once she does that, she's going to drink everything she can get her hands on. And you've seen that, right? Mm -hmm. What does she do with that? Well, that is someone who's an alcoholic has the inability to control after they intake that first amount. The question is, why would someone take that first drink knowing that the consequences would be so bad? And you have another daughter besides this. Yes. And you say you have driven drunk, blackout drunk, with that child in the car. Yes, I did. What the hell are you thinking? I wasn't. I don't have any excuse for it. I should not have been driving her, period. Yeah, I should no, have called you, her father no matter what would have happened no, and you, had him you, come You don't. Her. No matter how bad it made you look, it would not be as bad as you driving her blackout drunk and putting her life in danger. I agree. Well, look, Mike got real with Jen about being honest, and she actually admitted that she hasn't been telling the truth about some things. The question, is she ready to be fully forthcoming about everything in her life? We'll be right back. Hold a second. You do not have to defend yourself right now. This is my life. And she doesn't have the right to be lecturing you when we're talking about the fact that you have made the most sinister manipulation of your child that I can imagine. Fill in the Blanks is back with all new shows that will provide you with the information you need to fill in the blanks in your life. I'm hosting top experts in brain health and behavioral science, the best women and children's advocates and visionaries who share their experience, strength, and hope with the important topics, including how to help children navigate the new normal and how to understand human behavior. An all new season of Fill in the Blanks starts May 25th, available on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. Before the break, we looked at a tape where Mike sat down one-on-one -on -one with Jen, and she admitted that she hasn't been the most truthful about some things. She even admitted that it's possible she could return to work, that her back isn't as bad as she might make out sometimes. But is there something else Jen hasn't been honest about? Take a look. There's something that I need to talk to Alexa, my daughter, about, but I don't know exactly how to bring it up. It's a lie and it's a big secret. The reason that I lied was because I was already drinking heavily. She was already getting fed up with me because I kept telling her I was gonna stop and I never stopped. The lie caused her to show me love and sympathy and not be mad at me for being a drunk. It is time to tell Alexa the truth. If I'm truly gonna get the help that I'm trying to get right now, I need to put everything out on the table and she needs to know. So, Jen, what is it that you're lying to her about? There's no better time than right now. She's sitting right in front of you. Look her in the eye and take this opportunity to tell her what you need to tell her. Alexa, um, I've been lying to you about being diagnosed with cancer again. I, I do not have cancer again. You told me that I have to pull the plug and, like, all that, and it's, like, and it's a lie? Like, you're disgusting. You're right. You're absolutely right. There's people dying. I know. And I thought you were. I but know. But just because you wanted to cover up Jen again. I just wanted you, you to love me. You're hurting your daughter again. I just wanted you to love me, Alexa. That was it. I just wanted you to love me, even though I'm an alcoholic and I, can't, I cannot control that behavior. How come I'm a 20-year-old girl and can control my behavior, but you can't? A mom of two. Because you're not an alcoholic, sweetheart. You don't, you're not a drug, you're not an addict. You don't have 
those type of issues. I, I know, chose not to be an addict. But you don't understand. I didn't choose to be an alcoholic. Those are excuses. You, know, you could have I, chose this whole time to either tell me the truth or to figure things out or to get help or to stop drinking, but you did not choose any of those. You chose to lie and manipulate to get what Jennifer wants. Yes, I did. I'm tired of that. I know. I've I had too. to suffer because of you. I know, and that's why I'm here is because I want the help. I don't want to lie to you anymore. I don't want to hurt anybody else that I care about anymore. You're disgusting. <laughs> I don't want to look at you. Do you know the difference between right and wrong? Yes, Dr. Phil, And I you do. knew the difference between right and wrong when you allowed her to go to bed at night thinking my mother has terminal cancer, has refused chemotherapy, so she's over there letting this disease eat away at her from the inside out. You were selfish enough to let her suffer when in fact, we have the documentation here that on your last examination, they said you are cancer free. Yes, that is true. She is cancer free. Which I'm glad to hear that, but it's just the principle of everything and like everything that you constantly lie about and you don't get that your lies have affected my life in such a negative way. And I'm sorry, baby. I'm so you sorry. You say I'm sorry, I really but am I'm sorry, sorry isn't enough. I've been there for you 100%. I know. And you lied to me the most and you hurt me the most. And I just don't understand. I help you all the time. I'm there for you all the time. I, I ruin my relationships with people because of you. I know, baby. It's just my alcoholism takes over everything. And I'm so sorry. But okay, so if your alcohol takes over everything, what about the lies? What was the point of lying? Who did it benefit you? It didn't even benefit me. It didn't really benefit anybody. Then why did you lie? We asked her, what were her excuses for lying about cancer? Number one. Sympathy wanted people to care. Totally manipulative. Two, said while drunk. So, no accountability. Devil made me do it. Next, I don't want to say it was for attention, but maybe it was. Of, it of was. course it was. And then, the ne because in the very next statement, she says, I just felt like I didn't know how to get my family's attention. It was totally for attention. Yeah. I think the thing that makes me the most mad, though, is just the fact that you constantly would blame you being so sick on everything and that, the, that you couldn't help me and you couldn't be there for me because you're so sick. And then it's like, I have health issues, too, but you're not there for me. I will not let you sit here and say that because there's How? many times that I have taken you wherever you want to go, the doctor, the hospital, to go do whatever a you want to do. A long time ago, and over a year ago. You, no, no, over no, a year no, ago. That is not true. But, it is true. Okay, Before then I guess all we're going to have started. to agree to disagree. That's not true. And there's many people How? that will back that up. How? Because, don't, Alexa, when don't, people don't, don't do it. Wait, hold a second. Do not allow her to lecture you and do not defend yourself right now. You do not have to defend yourself right now. This is my life. And she doesn't have the right to be lecturing you when we're talking about the fact that you have made the most sinister manipulation of your child that I can imagine. You have allowed her to go to bed at night thinking my mother is over there dying. She's drinking herself to sleep instead of fighting for her life. She obviously doesn't love me enough to fight to stay here with me. There must be something wrong with me and I'm gonna have to make the decision to pull the plug out of the wall when it's time for her to die. You didn't only lie about cancer, you further burdened her with the decision of taking your life when it came to the critical moment. It's like you've got a stick in the dagger and then you've got to twist it so she hurts even more. Do not allow her to lecture you. I was at an all-time low, and yes, I did lie about having cancer again, Alexa, but it's because I didn't want to be alive. I wished I would have had cancer. I wished I wouldn't be here suffering the way I do. And you're right, I, Dr. Right, Phillips, Jen, right. Jen, this isn't pour me, pour no, me, pour me another drink, I know, right? right? Like, like the reality is, above your head right now, the description is I'm liar. liar. You yeah, are, yes. and, and you have been. Her okay? life is literally a false narrative. It's everything she tells me is a lie. So now even the biggest thing that I thought that wasn't a lie, that was the biggest lie. You lied. Well, there's a big question here. And that is, what is the one decision? If this life is gonna turn around, if something is going to happen, what is the one decision that Mike is calling on her to make? She claims she wants to turn this around. She wants to have a second chance. 
What's she willing to do to have it? We'll find out after the break. You've been down this journey before, but you lied, you said. And so, you know, the question really is, are you willing to be honest? And what does that look like for you? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Don't touch me. So you weren't really talking about blowing up the bus? No. You shoved me. How could he shove you into it if you weren't in there? I was in there. You just said you weren't. That's tomorrow. Growing up, my mom was literally my backbone. She was there for me all the time. And now I was the complete opposite. I tried to be the best mom that I could. I would come home from school and she would be drunk, either blacked out or passed out. Even though I don't have a driver's license, one time I had to pick up my mom because she was drunk. That's when everybody noticed that I had changed for the worse. I don't like being like this. I just can't stop anymore. I've been joined this past hour by my good friend, life coach Mike Baer. He's author of One Decision. Now, this is a book that I fully endorse to anyone who wants to connect with their authentic self. And, you know, you sit down sometimes and you think, I- I- I'm going to do this, I've-, I've got the willpower, but you don't know where to start. And right now, Jen is in exactly that situation. She has been living in a state of confusion. And she needs to clarify her purpose in order to get the results that she claims that she wants. What's the one decision she has to make? The starting point, one decision that you have to make, Jen, is to be honest. You know, the other one decision she obviously needs to make is to get sober. But honesty uh, goes hand in hand with sobriety. And I think that you've been down this journey before. You've told other people when you tried to get sober, uh, I'm getting sober, I'm doing the best I can, but you lied, you said. And so, you know, the question really is, are you willing to be honest and what does that look like for you? Yeah, I don't have any, I I have to be honest from here on out because if I'm not honest now, I'm going to end up either taking my own life killing somebody else, or doing something horrible because I cannot control my drinking. At the end of the day, it's going to be up to you, Jen, if you want to change. Well, you said when you were talking to her in the tape, and you guys were sitting at the picnic table in in the park, where you allowed your daughter to live, by the way, in a park, you said there are three steps you've got to do here. you got to be honest, you got to be open, and you got to be willing. Jen took a huge step today. And I, I, I don't want to trivialize that. You, you took a huge step here today by admitting that you were lying about having cancer currently. So where do you two go from here, and what do you need to do next, right after the break? Constantly arguing with your spouse? Are you feeling trapped or contemplating divorce? any of that's true, I want to hear from you. Log on to drphil.com and email your question. If it's chosen, I might just be able to help. Jen, you have a journey to make. And, you know, Mike, you describe it very well in, in your book when you talk about going from victim to victor. The victim mentality is blaming others for your emotions. The victor mentality is owning your ability to control those emotions. The victim mentality is thinking that life is against you versus the victim mentality of knowing the universe has your back. You're not powerless. You've got to find the tools you need to cope. And that's what I want to talk about are the tools. And I can tell from watching you here If you stop drinking right now, just said, okay, I'm going to gut up and stop drinking, you would have serious withdrawals. I think you need medically supervised detox. Mike, you work with this population all the time. Do you agree? Absolutely. We need to get into it right away today. So we have arranged for you to go to 
a medically supervised detoxification center. It's Revive Treatment Center. And they would like to offer you uh, 30 days uh, with medical supervised detoxification and rehabilitation program to get you started. And I can tell you in advance, that's not going to be enough. Right. But that will get you started. It will get your system flushed. And, and additionally, Coach Mike has offered to have a coach work with you from Cass Centers to make sure you have the best team moving forward. So we're rallying the Thank troops you. for you. Have you had a better offer lately? Never, never, not lately or ever. What do you think? I mean, I just want her to get better. And obviously, until she's better, I mean, it has to start with being honest and being honest with yourself. And if you're not honest with yourself, you can't be honest with anybody else. I know, Boo. You're right. Is this something you want to do? Absolutely, Ed. 100%. Because let me tell you how this works. This is between you and them. I can tell you about them, mm -hmm. and I, I can arrange for this to not cost you money. But it's between you and them. When you leave here, you, you sit down and meet with them, okay. and I'm, I'm out. Okay. The decision is yours. Whatever you work out with them is between you and them. And Coach Mike has generously agreed to have cast centers involved. What you do with her, that's between you and them. Yeah. HIP is involved. I don't need to know. I don't get a, I don't want a report. Don't yeah. get a report. That's between you guys. Yeah, you never have. So, no, I, and I don't want to. Right. Although uh, one day later on down the line, I would love to come back to your show and show you how well and, I am doing because I know I can do it. If you come back here and tell me, that'll be great. I would love to see that. All right, Mike, we got a plan? We got a plan. All right, it's a deal. All right. And I, I can't recommend his book, One yep. Decision Enough. Now, this book is a manual for making decisions to being your most authentic self. And if you'd like your own copy, you can pick one up anywhere books are sold. I mean, this thing is everywhere. Coming up, would you like a mental getaway or something to lift your spirits? Well, I may just have what you've been looking for. Coming up next. <laughs> Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. Well, here's a question. Are you looking for a way to add some fun and joy to your life? I have a suggestion, and it's right on your phone, computer, or tablet. You don't even have to go anywhere. It's an exciting and fun gaming app called Bingo Blitz. But this is no ordinary bingo game. In fact, it's the number one free-to-play social bingo game. Every day, more than a million people play Bingo Blitz, and we have three of them in our virtual audience today. So let's start with Michelle. So where are you from and what's your favorite part of playing this game? Hi, Dr. Phil. Thanks Hi. so much for having me on. I am a mom of two. I am an owner of a spa in Dover, New Hampshire. And I also started up a nonprofit during this pandemic. So for me, Bingo Blitz is just a really fun, stress-free game to get away from reality. Well, great. And that's a perfect use of it. Where's Adrian? Hi, Dr. Phil. I'm here in Oklahoma. Hey, Adrian. What got you into Bingo Blitz? I was looking for a fun game app, and I found I was happy when I found Bingo Blitz. Uh, where's Bonnie? Hey, Bonnie. Hi, Dr. Phil. I'm here in Pittsburgh, PA. What do you enjoy about Bingo Blitz? I love Bingo Blitz. I started playing Bingo as a kid with my mom. But this app game has so many cool features. It's so much fun. And Dr. Phil, I've made friends playing with players all over the world. Yeah, that's the fun thing about this because people can get on from anywhere on the globe and you meet some really interesting people. So let's see what this excitement is all about and put the three of you to a little challenge. You can play on any of your devices, but players today have their laptops ready. Now, each of you will have four cards, and once I say go, we're going to see who gets bingo first. All right, ready, set, go. Now, while they're playing, let me tell you, Bingo Blitz combines fun, excitement, colorful graphics, and so many features. It's a different challenge on every level, every day. And power-ups are a special bonus. 
They can act as a free space on your card, helping you hit more bingos. There are lots of different power-ups and even mini games in Bingo Blitz. Yeah. And then, as I said, a really fun part is every round has a different theme. So, how's it going, ladies? Oh, I see they're close. Nobody's got it yet, though. And uh, keep in mind, with multiple cards, you can get bingo on one, two, or even all of your cards. And while you're doing this, you meet people from all around the country and all around the globe. I got two bingos! Well, look, the best part of all this fun and action is that it's free. And uh, I'm glad that you guys had fun playing today. And I just want to say everyone is a winner at Bingo Blitz because they're giving the three of you and our entire virtual audience a $100 e-gift card. Everybody watching today in the virtual audience gets a $100 e-gift card. You can spend it on whatever you want. A million players a day can't be wrong, so join in on the fun today. Just go to the Apple App Store or Google Play and download Bingo Blitz for free and get a special welcome bonus. And be sure to tell your friends and family about it so you can enjoy the bingo fun together. I want to thank all of my guests today. If you'd like to be part of our virtual audience, go to my website, drphil.com, for all the details. I always love hearing your thoughts on the shows and anything else you want to comment on. You can find me on all the social media platforms, especially our Facebook page, Dr. Phil Fanatics. That's P-H-A-N. Uh, it's where super fans go to chat about the episodes and get any Dr. Phil news before anybody else. That's where I put everything first. And don't forget to subscribe to the all-new season of my podcast, Fill in the Blanks. I've had it on hiatus, and I've started it back up. We are digging into everything from how to interpret body language to how to understand human behavior. And I'm gonna speak with leading experts, visionaries, and decision makers about topics that affect you, things you can use in your daily life. And if you like secrets, well, Robin has lots of them and she shares them on her podcast, I've Got a Secret with Robin McGraw. She and her amazing guests reveal the secrets to improving and empowering your life. You don't want to miss a single episode of that. We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for being here. So long.